Hey guys, it's Eric here. Uh, welcome to a now playing of Infinity Wars. I'm actually joined here by Elfie Coyle, uh, chairman of Lightmare Studios, also the creator of Infinity Wars. Thank you for joining me today, Elfie. Thanks, it's good to have you, Eric. So why don't we uh, jump in and you can tell me all about it. Awesome, awesome. So just to take it from the very top, Infinity Wars is traditional trading card gaming completely reimagined for the digital free-to-play um, formats of PC, Mac, Android, and iOS. So the key features and the key uh, points of difference is that it, every card is fully animated. Um, there's factions from the Star Trek universe, which is the big announcement we've been making recently, as well as full open to player to player trading. Um, as, and the big one is another big one is um, that we have different modes in the game that completely eliminate the concept of pay to win, which is a big complaint of trading card games in general. And we also have simultaneous turns, so both players are taking their turns at the same time, so there's no waiting for the other player to make their moves. Uh, the game moves much faster and, and has a much more uh, integrated pace, and it also opens up the concept of bluff and prediction mechanics, which is cool. And then every animated, um, every battlefield we have is fully 3D as well, so there's different modes and battlefields you can change on the fly. Um, so that, you know, the concept is that you can con uh, conquer these parallel reali realities with or against your mates even as of right now because it's currently on Steam Early Access. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, you know, why don't you uh, show me how the game plays or, you know, show me, you know, a deck or something, something yeah. cool? Sure. So, having a look at the game here, what we can do is we can have a quick squiz at the, um, like, the, the basic mechanics of the game. I can take people through. So, okay. if you've, um, you know, if you're a player who's played any kind of uh, trading card game, then this will all make sense. I'll be moving at a pace that sort of makes sense. Uh, for anyone who's familiar with something like, for example, Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh, mm -hmm. any of those traditional trading card games, which is what we've built Infinity Wars on, but as I said before, completely redesigned it for the digital format. So what you see here is uh, this is uh, I don't, the audio is coming through, right? So we'll have mm -hmm. um, yep. the lovely lady here talking over the top as well, but uh, we'll do our best to work with that. Um, so in Infinity Wars, the idea is to take us uh, take the opponent's health or morale down to zero. There's two different modes of, of um, basically winning the game. Um, and we'll cover what morale is um, in a moment. So at the, of, at the bottom of the screen, they have a hand, so we can have a look at these cards. I can just touch any of these cards here, bring it up on screen, and we can see that every card is beautifully animated in some form. I like this guy here. We can have a look at this other one. Yep. Awesome. I might play this guy out. Okay, so, key thing is, she's been making her moves at the same time as I have been. Um, and so then we press end turn and we watch as the two sides have their actions and planned actions resolve all at once. And so this is the start of turn two, I've just drawn mm -hmm. a new card. Um, and we can see here that he's played out a Soldier of Fortune. I'm sorry, she's played out a Soldier of Fortune. And um, I now have two resources. So the resource curve works. There's no mana burn, not, no, no mana screw. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, every turn you get an extra maximum resource in which to play your hand out with, okay. up to a maximum of 10, naturally. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a look here. We've got two resources to spend. I can just pop two of these things out instead. Now, when okay. they come out, they come out into the support zone, which is essentially where they need to come out for a turn before they're usually used. Kind of like summoning sickness. Kind of like that, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then from there, there's actually four different main zones that are, that are different in Infinity Wars to any other trading card game. And this allows for positional combat and tactics, which adds a whole other layer of, of depth to the game itself. I can now take my guy who's free to ready to rock and do something, and put him either into the defense zone to defend this turn, or into the assault zone. So, I'm a pretty aggressive player, so we're going to go straight for assault. And then we'll see what happens. Again, it's a reminder that this... Thing, this game only has essentially four main things that happen. So you draw a card, you plan out your all your movements, then the resolution phase and everything happens that was planned out on both sides, layers in to be planned out. And then we have the end of the turn. Right, so we're going to see what she's done. And she's gone to defend uh, whilst I've gone to attack. Now, these moves are all made in secret. People yep. don't know what's going to happen. And so we'll see some good examples of what can happen as a result of that later on. So combat resolves, and we have uh, persistent damage and health. So the five attack I have went off his seven health, bringing him down to two. And his two uh, attack damage has come off my health, bringing me down to two out of four. I'll just click that away. Next turn, get a cool tech knight. Okay, now I'm gonna spend all three resources to bring him out, okay. then make some more choices around where I wanna put my people. 
Now, obviously, if this combat happens again, that two damage will come off my two health from the first Flame Dawn Aspirant. Um, sorry, Footman. And, uh, and it will kill him. So yep. what I can do is I can rearrange my guys, oh. make sure he's going first, combat resolves left to right, and we'll see what happens. So that's also another cool thing that um, the game has. Because it's online, the persistent damage actually shows and it stays. Unlike, you know, if yeah. you're playing... Um, you know, in person, you kind of, you know, either have to write it down yeah, or, it down, yeah. Put little tokens on there, mm -hmm. none of that stuff. And that's the beautiful thing about having a digital format game. Um, let me just go like that. Killed him off, great. My guy's still alive. Now, oh, there's no defenders left, so all the rest of the damage will go straight onto the fortress. So 100 health goes down by 9. And he gets smacked around a little bit. He's now down, now down to 88 health. Okay, so what we're going to do is see a couple of things right now. We're going to see how ability cards work. Um, and we're also going to see some bluff and prediction mechanics, uh, well, in this case a prediction mechanic happen. So, uh, Alita's going to put out her massive defender, a 0.25 defense golem. Now I can tell, obviously it's a defense golem, right? So it's highly unlikely she's going to attack with this guy. What she's probably going to do with him at the end of the turn is put him in the defense zone if she knows what's good for her. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is I can cut her off at the pass and go, okay, you're probably going to put that defense golem into the defense zone. I have this cool ability called Stumble that costs one, I can see in the top right hand corner, return target character in a combat zone to its controller's support zone. So it'll shove it right back as soon as it tries to go out, if it tries to go out. If she doesn't try to put it out, I've just wasted a card and wasted my resource. That's the, the risk reward okay. of play, making this kind of play mm -hmm. without knowing where it is at the time. So I'm just going to target the defense goal and I'm going to bank that she's going to do that. So I'm going to go all out on the attack not have any defenses. Mm -hmm. Also and, kind of baiting her into playing the golem too, right? Because yeah. you're, gonna, you're representing a lot of damage there. Exactly. But yeah, she, all she can see currently, she can't see that third, that, that fourth guy being put mm -hmm. there. She knows that there's three guys there from last turn, so she's probably going to make that play. I've just got two more resources to spend and nothing else I can do. So I'm going to end my turn. And we'll see. Yep, she's done that. So the bet's paid off in a way. Stumble flicks him back to the support zone. And then all that damage hits through. Just did 20 damage. Nice. Okay. Turn 5. Now, Commanders is a very important part of Infinity Wars and one of the key things that make it a very different experience to many other trading card games. The reason being, you can choose, when we designed this in the first place, the idea is, you know, we get attached to certain characters, we love the idea of having certain guys on our side, and we want to be able to draw that person every time. So what we've done is, when, we when you first create a deck, you choose your Commanders, you choose up to three Commanders, um, and then they sit in the command zone. Those commanders can be used for their abilities while they're in the command zone, um, and they can also be dragged straight out onto the battlefield, so there's no summoning sickness, essentially, for these guys. It's two benefits of having them be commanders. And the other cool thing is they actually determine the factions that the person plays with, so like the colors. They determine what mm -hmm. you're allowed to play with, what cards you can have in your deck legally. So whacking this guy out, Bromwich Field Commander, he gives, when he's in the assault zone, he gives all other attacking players plus two, plus zero, which is kind of cool. Now, there is like four guys here, right? So I can take a bit of a risk here um, and just go all out. In this case, I'm probably going to actually put um, maybe this guy, because he regenerates, into the defense zone Okay. and see how he goes. Obviously, if he goes all out, then he's going to do some damage to me, but he might want to stop some of this stuff coming through. So, I'll just do a little rearrange here and off we go. Let's see what happens. Is there a maximum amount of units you can put into either zone? There's no maximum. Nice. So there, ha there are cards that bring out every single beast in play, and <laughs> your deck into play, for example. Um, and it gets kind of messy, but it's, it's fun messy. <laughs> okay. So we can just see here that we've it took three hits to take out that defense golem, right? So a defend a turn will sit there and defend every single attacker from left to right until it dies. Gotcha. In this case going to kill off the ending drone and my character and boom okay so he has gone forward and attacked on the other end so but only with two characters so my tech knight's going to survive and hold the fort so uh, animated battle for, sorry 3d battlefields we have here as well so there's a pie of the fortress of dawn and we can see it's a you know full 3d battlefield looks kind of cool does some awesome stuff because you can only have one out uh, in this case it um, basically creates a free warrior every single turn on the on the battlefield. Okay, and so this 
We should almost bring it home. We should be able to do pretty well here. Um, I think that's about all I can do this turn, so I'm just going to press end turn. Okay, and we'll see a big amount of combat there, bringing him down to, third, to 37. Okay, so just to let you guys know, I mean, obviously there's some pretty simple cards we've been seeing so far. Key point of our game as well is that we make sure that with increased rarity, it doesn't become increased necessarily power, but it makes it a more complicated card that mm -hmm. has some potential you know, to do some pretty interesting things. So in this case, we have Agent Call Firestarter with some pretty gorgeous animation, and he's got an ability called Charge, so he goes straight to the Assault Zone. He can also evolve, and so transform into a different card. Attacks three times every turn, and wow. can evolve into a 24-24 Flying Unstoppable Dragon that would attack Jeez. three times as well. And I, and I noticed that's a legendary, so... Yeah. Okay, yeah. makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, uh, and you know, it, it might seem like it's more powerful, but there's a morale cost, so 12. Mm -hmm. So when you lose uh, a character, you lose morale, and that's an alternate win condition, essentially. If uh, you get in zero morale, you'd lose the game. So losing him will cost quite a bit of morale, 12 in this case. What's the pay 12? Is that pay 12 morale? or Pay 12 resources. Oh, resources. So, gotcha. Um, so how do you get to 12? How do you get to 12 through different cards you can have, and there's also a thing called the trading post, which we'll take a look at in the second game. Awesome. And we'll see how we can get above 10 resources. Just going to do... We don't want to lose this guy because his buff will go. So we'll do it like that. And then hopefully this will bring it home. Bam. And metric ton of damage, so 62 <laughs> nice. damage to the full. I'm kind of glad it didn't go cycle through each attack animation there because yeah. it's like, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's a bit of the polish thanks to the beta testers have been helping us out along the way. So actually, a recent change, you used to have to click for every single oh, okay. one. But now it's, uh, yeah, looking pretty good. So that's the first game of Infinity Wars, which we've won. And, um, and then we're going to take a quick look now at the, uh, at the Star Trek announcement, and then another a game to have a look at uh, a couple of different things. So it's daily wins, so you get free cards from everywhere. You get free cards from playing the game in the campaign, for playing against AI, for logging into the game once a day, for mm -hmm. winning three times, or playing, sorry, playing three games. Um, you get you get that as well. So you kind of have multiple like quests or multiple adventures to kind of go through to, to earn your cards. Um, when you earn the cards, is it is it possible to get something like that legendary from doing some of these kind of side side quests or, or missions or? Um, yeah, absolutely. You can get whole packets of cards from doing from doing um, yeah all these different missions and side quests and and you know, there's a full there's a hundred and twenty something quests as well. So wow. there's like a lot to be to explore in the game from the back end. Um, so, we're going to have a quick look at the the new Star Trek cards, and then finally we'll. Um, why don't Why don't we pick the illegal one? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the the new Star Trek release. So we can have a look at these cards. They're looking pretty sweet, and uh, you know, hopefully bring in a bunch of people who are into Star Trek and into strategy of some kind, um, because there's a, there's so much more enjoyment if one can get it. Um, in, in actually understanding a trading card game, a mm -hmm. depth one, not one that you just press the button over yeah. and over again. And I mean, I spoke with you earlier now, you know, in terms of balance and, and do, adding the coolness of the, the Star Trek element to it. And you, you were telling me, you know, of course, you guys try to do your best to balance around for the game. Um, so, you know, it'll be fun for the players to see how this faction plays out. Yeah, absolutely. As the USS Enterprise, it's one of the cards we're most proud of. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Okay, so let's have a look at, um, just, we'll just jump into this, we probably won't actually finish this match because I want to do a, a riff run with us if we can. Sure. So let's quick squeeze at the teammate. Okay. So the one thing, we'll just pop out a zero cost triple, just for fun. <laughs> um, Having a look at the trading post, this is one of the things that we've used to deal with the concept of dead drawing. So when you have a whole dead turn because you drew a card that wasn't good when you've got maximum resources, you can choose to pay some of your resources to shuffle to get some card draw happening. So you can pay three to shuffle a card back into the deck and draw a card, pay five to draw a card, and pay nine to increase base resources by one to go above ten. And then that, that persists through the next round, the plus one? Yep, yes, okay. yeah, max, extra maximum resource, absolutely. And does that have a limit? Um, there's no real limit on that. Okay. One. There are cards that cost something like 15 resources. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, 
the, the mechanics are going to be pretty much the same in the second game, so rather than, than uh, boring the viewers with seeing the same thing again, they can always just download it and play it. Of course. Um, and we'll, we'll just jump out of this match and I'll start to show you Riff Run while we have a little bit of a conversation sure. in general, so if you've got some questions. Yeah, so I noticed uh, right away um, a, a difference already from this starting hand versus, or not just the hand, but this, the field, that you have three commander cards already there. Yeah. Whereas previously you didn't have yeah, it, you drew into it. Is that yeah. just part of the that system? Was just or? a tutorial just because okay. the concept of having these three commanders kind of overwhelms people for the first time they ever play the game. But as of your second game onwards, mm -hmm. it's always three commanders. Gotcha. Yeah. And how many commanders do you, do you roughly have, I guess, per faction? Because it's faction based, yeah, so right? Any character, any character mm -hmm. card can be chosen as a commander. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, like I mentioned before, if they have like a, an ability that activates or something, or like taps essentially, yep. um, they can use that ability from the command zone. So what we're looking at now is a rift run. So we're going to have a look at the, the um, one of the modes in the game that really evens up the whole idea of um, you know, being played, pay, pay to win. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do that away with a, with a mode like this, in which a player will create their deck from scratch, from a bunch of packets, and then play with that deck um, with other people who've made their deck from scratch from a bunch of packets. Um, the cool thing about this, and the key point of difference I will put ahead on this one, is that at the end of your Rift run, you can actually choose to purchase that deck. Wow, okay. So if you if you felt like it won a bunch of times and you, you kind of got attached to it, you're like, hey, I want that deck, so now I'm going to buy it. Yeah, okay, that's kind of cool, yeah. I like that. And even better is that if you play well with the deck and you've actually done well with the deck before you want the deck, you're going to get a discount on that deck as well. Oh, okay, yeah, as a reward, win. okay. Yeah. To, to the point where you can actually win a, win a deck for free. Oh wow, <laughs> okay, how many wins does that take? Uh, it's like 20 or 30. Oh it wow, takes six, that's, people a, do it. People that's a lot. Okay. Go through and do that. That's cool though, I like that there's no like cap of wins, mm -hmm. kind of like Hearthstone, like you kind of hit the 12 and it's like, okay, that's, that's it, it, like make another one, no, yeah. but that that's cool. Yeah, we like having like little, like we wanted to step into esports as well, so we're doing a bit of like mini tournaments and stuff. Who gets oh, the interesting. Highest riff run count for the weekend to get a mass set of prices. Is there going to be some type of like leaderboard? For yes. The, the, oh, okay. Yes, yes. And there is already currently leaderboards for for um, full ranked mode and mm -hmm. for normal constructed play, I believe as well. Sorry, sorry, ranked mode and um, riff runs. So what we can do here is we can choose our commanders. Where now a key point is that a card has purity, right? So essentially each um, of these cards will determine how many and what type of cards you can have in your deck. Both the factions they come from and then the power of a particular card in a particular faction. So in this case we can see that there's two symbols at the top there, which means it requires two Genesis Industry Commanders to be included in the deck. All right? Okay. So we're going to do that, which means we can now have one and two cost, uh, or one and two purity, sorry, um, Genesis cards, and we'll also go Something well, just for the sake of difference, we'll go the Royal Kidnapper. Okay. We'll go with that faction. So there's currently uh, seven factions in the game, um, with more launched on a regular basis. Obviously, the two Star Trek factions are coming in um, in a couple of weeks' time when the when the pre-orders go to full release, and essentially. Um, you know, all those cards will be usable in the game. Now, one of the key points is that the, you know, the Star Trek cards currently are not going to be accessible in ranked mode and professional play. Okay. Um, you know, we'll see how it all goes. And if we get enough demand, I don't see any reason why we, why we won't do that if, if people really want that. Um, so the people need a voice. They do. They have okay. to speak up and, and support, the, support the, the, the concept. So having a look here, we've got a secluded constructor. There are gold and foil cards if we can have some level of premium. Nice. Nice. And we can just go through and literally just choose a bunch of guys to make our deck before we have a match. Yeah, so... So do you have multi-factions in this uh, as you draft? Like, you're not kind of um, stuck in one faction, right? Yeah, well, you have whatever factions you chose as your commander. Okay. So gotcha. in this case, the, there's, you know, the blue, the um, Genesis Industries, and then the, the raw sort of death magic people. Gotcha. So then um, within this draft now you can either choose from either of those factions or like neutral or faction. Or neutral faction or merged faction. So there might be like a hybrid, yeah, Varul and Genesis character that could come up here. I'm putting very little thought into my cards. I'm picking the shiny ones and the ones that look best. <laughs> That's not going to bode well for uh, a little demo yeah, here. But we'll maybe I'll just outplay them we anyways. Hope, we hope. So, you know, like we see the, the power curve, which is mm -hmm. your, your resource curve. Um, does, as you're drafting or as you're going through this rip run, 
uh, does it, do the cards that show up start to help you build out your curve or um, do you have to kind of be careful about how no, you, you pick your cards? Very careful. They're very random, but just within that, that particular faction. So, um, you know, you get what you choose at the end of the day. And this deck is uh, 40 cards, I believe you said? 40 card is minimum deck, yep. Yeah. Three, three of each card is a minimum, um, uh, oh, sorry, three of each uh, character is the sort of, one, and spell is the maximum you can have within a deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's worth, you know, talking about how long matches normally go for. Um, we have typically 10 to 15 minutes for a match. Um, it's a good, good pace, like a good speed, I think. Uh, a lot of people don't have, you know, 30 to 45 minutes to spend, like, you know, so getting a, a lot of games within an hour is always good. Exactly. There's a nice shiny card I'm going to have to get. <laughs> the artwork looks amazing, though. Thank uh, you, man. So good job to the team. Yeah. You, you can definitely see, even though the death rate there, it's pretty decent. But we've, the guys have been working on it now for about 15 months, so they're getting better and better by the day. So, And the partnership, we're really thankful for CBS, uh, you know, having you know such high standards for their art as well. So it takes, it takes a while sometimes to get it across the line, which just raises the skill of the players even more, sorry, of the artists even more. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so for those who don't know, we are actually a, like a fully indie company, so there's only eight devs that are on board and, um, you know, we're growing a little bit by the day because we're getting more attention um, for our little indie product, but um, it's good, so it's really good that we're able to do this playthrough right now there'll be a lot of people who have never seen this game before still. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even for myself, you know, this is the first time I've seen it, so it's looking good. You know, I, I've come, you know, from the back in the day when Magic and, you know, I'm playing Hearthstone now, so the card games, you know, popularity have kind of seen a surge lately, and um, it's kind of cool to see, like, a variant like this, uh, you know, with a different play style, but kind of still having some of the core, um, you know, trading card aspect to it. And of course, as you said earlier, you know, being a trading card game, thank God, you know, like I want to be able to, like if, you know, I have a couple friends, you know, they, they want to play a specific deck or something, um, I can be like, hey, I'm not going to use this like powerful legendary. What do you have so that that can help me out? You know, like I, I like the whole bartering system with trading was like really cool to me um, mm -hmm. because it was always like, hey, I have this one and you really want it. So now that I know you really want it, you might give me two or three cards yeah. instead of, you yeah. know, so. Just another layer on top of uh, the game. Yeah. Almost at the end of the of the selection process. So, um, so another couple of points of difference that we've got as a game is that we've got weekly new cards. So every single week there's something cool to check out, something new to check out that can be played and earned through playing the missions of the game. Um, so you don't have access to them right away. You have to like. Do a mission you, to get them, or do a yeah. So every okay. week there's there's new um, there's new quests that come out, mm -hmm. and then those quests unlock brand new cards. So we're going to play our practice match against a bot, and hope we don't get owned on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you can do the riff run and play against you can an play AI for first. free against AI. Absolutely. Wow. Just flat okay. Out. We want people to play riff runs because we love them. So what have we got? Ooh. So dealing four damage to type of character. I don't like this commander over here. It's very scary. She can actually go and sacrifice cards to make other cards bigger and give them plus one, plus one. So I'm just going to deal with that instantly in turn. OK, so that basically, if you have an ability card, you can pretty much target commanders right off the bat. Depending on I the guess. ability card. Some, okay. some ability cards only target battlefield. There's, two diff there's three different areas. There's like battlefield, which includes the support zone. There's combat zones, which are just the assault and defense. And then the commander zone separate to all of that. Okay. And they, um, they are generally very protected. So the commanders are most protected support after that, and then the, the combat zones, of course, after that. So, yeah, this bot has got, you know, um, I'm going to play a, a location, a pretty fun location. Every turn it'll, it'll shuffle all my cards every, every time. You give me a new set. Keep it interesting, keep it fresh. That's a bold play. What if there's mm. something in your hand that you really like? Could be. Does that affect the other player as well, or is it just for yourself? That's just for me. Okay. Yeah. 
I just curious because I noticed it showed up on the battlefield the location. So remove target character from the game. All right, so I'm going to play this kidnapper out. Move that one out. Let's see what happens. Just getting this horde of unending drones. Kidnap her. See you later. Is she gone entirely? Um, just till he dies. Oh, okay. Oh, and he's almost dead. He's on one health, so that almost wasn't worth it. But now I can switch him up mm -hmm. and um, pop him in the assault zone and see what happens. Six resources. So I have to play a couple of things. And then mm -hmm. give him a jetpack. We might. Uh, what does a jetpack do? <laughs> <laughs> what most jetpacks do. Sounds fun. Yeah, should. We target character flying. Mm, okay. He seems quite happy about his jetpack. <laughs> I would be too, man. Yeah. Okay. Go this way. Oh, don't want to end turn yet. I got fireballs to use. Oh, nice. Always good to have spells. And just pop a couple of those fireballs out. Because there's so many more unending drones coming. For, sorry, I, yeah. I kind of missed it, but um, when you use the spells, was there kind of like the, is that what you wanted to do versus like, oh, that's not what I wanted to target kind of thing? No, I literally okay. did a you did. Yeah, there's okay. a red crosshair that comes up and it's like... Just, just wanted to make sure there was like a, oh, I fat fingered it and yeah. like, <laughs> I didn't mean to, to shoot well, it over there. Wonderfully, there's this thing uh, that we've actually put in the game called an undo button, oh. which has really annoyed me playing other trading card games recently, not being able to do that. <laughs> yeah, once you kind of get used to that mechanic, it's hard to kind of yeah. turn back, you know? So it's like magic is like hold on to it. Yeah, do I want it? <laughs> Bring it back in. <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of cool. Create a copy when he's removed from the game. Okay. So I don't know. I'll just blame that there because he's got ten attack. Oh, you're gonna lay the beating down now. Yep. Um, yeah, just uh, just want to reiterate that you know we're really uh, thankful for the support we've been getting so far from our, you know originally from our Kickstarter backers, um, and then um, you know obviously through the beta we've been going pretty strong, and the game is uh, quite a bit through beta now, so okay. it's, it's almost um, ready to ready to rock. Do you guys have a launch date? Uh, we don't have a launch date set, but it is going to be in the next couple of months. So awesome. Ho hopefully, should be in the next. And that's months. and that one's PC Mac first, right? Um, yeah, we're going PC Mac first, but the uh, mobile companion that we have coming out, which has a lot of the fun, we call it a companion because it has a lot of the functions of the full game, but not necessarily all of them. Okay. But you can, you know, play with your deck anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that is coming out uh, in in the next couple, almost in the next month or so. We're going to have that. Okay, so that's that. That will be after at least that made off. Okay, everyone can be able to access it at that point. Yeah. So let's go away. Taking health damage and just reduce his attack and toughness to, to one. And pop out the scouting ship. Off we go. Should bring it home. Yes. Nerf the crap out of that guy. <laughs> Give it plus four, plus four. Well, it's a good thing you. And so, interesting to note here is that it's, um, you know, the way that the, the combat works and the way that the uh, turn order works. Because I had initiative, each player has initiative each alternatively. Then my abilities go off before his. So because he, I had initiative, my ability went off first, and then his puts him back up to five five. Okay. And what determines who has initiative first? I guess. Uh, it's just it starts randomly and then oh, okay. alternates. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to see our split of rebel, pardon me, take on this, uh, this horde of unending drones, left to right. Bossing it up though. Yep, he is, and then he splits into two, <laughs> two wow. extra rebels as well when he dies. So, boom. But that's GG. Easy peasy. I agree on that one. So we can probably just finally have a look at the... Um, yeah, let's have a look at the shop. Yeah, sure. Okay, just finished a quest. So 
about it. Yeah, it's going to be more while we're visiting the shop. Mm -hmm. Let's get all these rewards. Okay. Cool, so this is the shop. You can buy, obviously, cards, um, packets for both in-game currency and for premium currency. Um, and then with that stuff, you can trade away. Um, decks, pre-made decks. Uh, there's a whole bunch of premium content for those who want to support us more. Um, and you can unlock sometimes card backs for premium currency and extra ba default battlefields. And then obviously you can do the pre-orders as well. Mm -hmm. yep, so, so do you earn currency through the game or do you just earn the packs? You earn currency through the game and then okay. you choose how to spend the in-game currency, so the infinity points. And how fast do you think that is? Um, it's it's reasonably fast. The key thing is we look after play new players. So okay. when you level up, you get a free packet of cards. Um, so obviously it's quite easy mm -hmm. to level uh, for a while, and you get quite a solid connection. Quick start collection in quite a quite a short period of time. And I guess um, I, know, I guess the next question is, what is three hundred currency in regards to like a dollar amount? Yeah, so it works out to be about a dollar twenty for a hundred points. Okay, and are, is there like some type of bigger package of like if you spend X amount you get like even more points? Yeah, kind yeah, of there's system? like all the way up. So some people have. Okay, yeah. and I guess the last question, the most important mm -hmm. question, is if let's say I'm in the office and I'm playing someone that I know is going to spend a lot of money, he's going to go and I don't know throw like three hundred dollars like right off the bat, and I'm. Yeah. I decide, you know, let me feel this game out. I want to play it. I want to earn some of my cards my own way. Yeah. Uh, what is my chance against, yeah, beating him if he spends three hundred dollars? Because a lot of people's fear is like pay to win, right? Like yep. if I'm gonna run into a deck, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run into a monster. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not gonna be fun, right? Yep. If I get rolled. So how do I handle that? So what I would do, uh, and what I love playing as well, and we've had this in the game since Alpha, is a concept called merge deck mode. So you can just set up a merge deck game, invite him to your merge deck game. And he brings his $400 deck, you bring your 50, 50 cent deck, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then what happens, it takes all those cards and shuffles them up. Oh, wow. And you draw from the same card pool, and it really does come down to who's got the best, most skill on those awesome. cards and a bit of luck in drawing the right okay. cards. Okay, so let my friend spend the money, and then we'll play together, and then That's I right. get to I get his, to play his, his cards. cards. Yeah, yeah, with alternate art, you can go do all that, and, and, um, and yeah, enjoy all that. That's a really cool one. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you know, why don't you remind the folks, you know, like, um, when roughly the game's going to come out, what platforms and anything else yeah, you want sure. to say to them. So the key thing is to go to www.playinfinitywars.com and, um, and actually jump in and, and grab an account. Um, the pre-orders should be live as of this going live. So yeah, um, get some cards if you want to or just enjoy the game and, and look forward to you know hanging out with you guys. We just want to build the absolute best game we can make and we're quite confident that we can do that now. We've got a, a solid game with great mechanics and, and a bunch of cool artists who have been doing really well. And now we've got a great brand with, with Star Trek coming into Infinity Wars uh, and the options are quite endless there when it comes to that as well. So we just want to create the biggest like all out brawl of, uh, of Infinity Wars that we can. Um, and so yeah, welcome everyone's support and, and look forward to seeing you guys on the forums and in game. Awesome, thank you so much for the uh, demo today and I hope you guys uh, you know, check it out and try it out and um, yeah. Yeah, well it. thanks Eric and thanks to all the viewers and yeah, see you guys Great. Then. Cheers.